Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CSEC English Made Easy. Today we have a, another lesson lined up for you. And before I actually begin the lesson, I am going to check to ensure that we are live. Going to check to ensure that all is well. And then we begin. To ensure that we are live. Okay. So live. I'm hearing you. So if you're here, thank you for being here. Take some time and share this lesson with someone who needs it. Um, I'm very excited about today's lesson. I'm really, really excited about today's lesson. So I'm going to give you a minute. Take some time to share with someone who needs it. And then we're going to begin. All right, so I see that we're here at the moment. I'm going to pause, allow my train to pass. Yes, I have a train all for myself. I'm joking. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about error recognition. And when we talk about error recognition, I am talking about the CXC English A paper one. So if you have been following all of our lessons, you would have noted that last week we spoke about the changes, not the changes, but we spoke about the format for the CXC English A exam paper. And we went into details about what the layout of the paper is like. So today I want to talk about a section of um, what you might see in a section of the paper. And that is called error recognition. Now, this lesson is for those persons who are... I would say beginning to intermediate is also a lesson that um, I've been thinking about th this lesson for a year. So I'm so excited to finally get it done. But I want you to bear in mind that I am trying to compress maybe one, one month's worth of teaching into one hour. And so typically, this lesson would have been taught in stages throughout a period of time. So if at any point you're confused or you need to ask any um, question whatsoever, um, please post a comment and I will be able to see it. So let's begin. Now, when I talk about error recognition, I am talking about what you're seeing right here. This is a section from the CSEC English sample exam paper one that's in the syllabus. 
So what we're doing is ensuring that you understand all of the things that are required to do this activity right here. So this is our end goal. So we I wanted us to start with that. Now let me go into explaining what error recognition is. As you saw before, candidates are asked to identify possible errors in sentences. Some sentences are um, incorrect, whereas others are acceptable as they are. Now, the possible errors that you might see in the sentences that are presented on the exam, it might be a combination of grammatical errors. So it could be subject verb, it could be pronoun antecedent, past tense, etc. Right? You could see errors in language, faulty diction. You could also see misuse, and I say mixed metaphors because in some textbooks you might see the term mixed. However, when you look at the CXC exam, it says misused metaphors. It's the same thing, right? So misused, mixed metaphors, um, cliches, redundancies, or sentences with unnecessary words, too wordy. Um, and I put, I have repetitive there, but repetitive can come under redundancy. So these are possible errors that you might encounter based on error recognition. Now, let us continue with looking at, based on what we just said, going back, we're going to look at the instructions that are presented in the section. So the section says, A, the sentence is acceptable as it stands. B, contains cliche or misused metaphors. And we just spoke about that briefly. C, the sentence is incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction. And we just spoke about that. And guys, I'm going to go into each of these major topics in this presentation. And D, the sentence is too wordy, that is repetitive or contains redundancies. So this is what we're using to gauge the types of errors that we're looking for or the types of errors you need to be able to understand how to identify. All right, now, before we look at misused metaphors, any at all, I like to first look at metaphors. Um, and so when you, we look at metaphors, you're able to, now to understand um, what exactly does it mean when we say misused metaphors. So if I should ask any of you here, what is a metaphor? I am sure someone would be able to quickly type a response to say a metaphor is, and I'm going to give you a second, anyone who is able to, to just type in and tell me what a metaphor is. And I know I, I always say this, there's a delay on your end, because I'm talking and I'll have to wait on you to respond. So while you're responding, we can say a metaphor is a comparison between two things without using as or like. Now, I wanted to highlight without. Hi, Joseph. Exactly. Um, you have the correct, 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 correct correct can i can i okay i can give you a heart absolutely i'm able to 
Excellent. So it's a comparison with between two things without using as or like. And this is the basic definition of what a metaphor is. And one congratulation. So, um Sharnessa. Sharnessa, congratulations. Now, what does that mean? Let me give you some examples. Now, I am a rock. Notice the person is comparing themselves to a rock. And if we look at the figurative language, we might say a rock because a rock is steady and strong, right? Or he roared after realizing he was hurt. Can you tell me for the second one, what is the comparison? What is the young man being compared to? So he roared after realizing he was hurt. Can somebody tell me what it, what is a young man being compared to? Um, just type it, type it. What do you think? And then finally, my brother is the black sheep of the family. So we have three instances where we see for the first one, someone is comparing themselves to a rock and notice the usage no as or like is used um the second one somebody anybody <laughs> he roared after realizing he was hurt anyone anyone what kind of animal talk to me people <laughs> nobody no one he roared and I was thinking about a lion when I wrote it. So let me let me know if you thought. So he's come his reaction to how he to realizing he was hurt. You know, he's being compared to a lion, a lion roaring. Princess, excellent. Princess says lion. Excellent, princess. Um, Vanessa, excellent as well, lion. And Sharnessa said, maybe a lion. Onika says, lion. You're all correct. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Excellent. And Altia says, lion. So, okay. So, you guys are getting. So, you realize that we can clearly see the two things that are being compared are clearly identified, right? And my blood brother is a black sheep of the family, suggesting, guys, I forgot the full stop, but put it in, <laughs> suggesting that, hey, he's the outcast, you know, he's the one that we don't really talk about. So we now understand exactly when we say metaphor what we're talking about. Cool? So if we understand what is a metaphor, then we should now be able to look more closely at what a misuse or mixed metaphor is right and when i say misuse that is the term that is stated by cxc we're just repeating myself for those who are just joining a mix and putting the word mixed there because you might see that term in some textbooks so it's basically the same now so a misuse or mixed metaphors are metaphors that you don't have a sustained comparison. What does that mean? What exactly does that mean? It means that we know that a metaphor should be comparing two things. But for the misuse metaphor, you don't see those two things being compared. Hi. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Hi, Lewis. <laughs> you don't see those two things being compared, right? Um, Lewis, share it with your, 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 I see you share. Thank you. All right. So this results in the reader being unable to identify the two things that are being compared. Because that comparison is not made effectively, the reader is confused. The reader is like, what is going on? And that is why a lot of students are confused when it comes to misused metaphors. And I want to assure you, you are 
you are completely normal. Nothing is wrong with your understanding, right? Because the fact that the metaphor is not sustained, it therefore means that it is an error in writing. So it's an error in writing because the metaphor, the comparison is not being effectively made, all right? So what does that mean? Let us look at, look at an example, all right? All at once, he was alone in his noisy hive with no place to roost. I'm going to hi, Tilly. Morning. I'm happy to, I was wondering what happened to you and the gang. All right, so all at once, he was alone in the noisy hive with no place to roost. Now, when you look at that now, guys, looking at it, you're like, what is going on? Can anyone identify those terms that should be or some kind of metaphor, but it's not sustained? It's not really clear. Can you identify? Let me know. I'm going to give you a second to really and truly see if you can answer my question. And if you're confused at this point, as I said to you, you're normal. <laughs> All right? So, okay, so Tilly's calling the gang. Thank you, Tilly. All right, so for those of you who are like, huh, what's going on? Let me repeat, and I know persons are joining at this moment. We're looking at error recognition, and we're looking at at misuse metaphors, right? And so the metaphor, the misuse metaphor is a metaphor that the comparison is not sustained, meaning that it does, there's no, you, you cannot clearly identify the two things that are being compared. So when you look at all at once, he was alone in his noisy hive you're you're realizing that there should be a comparison between um where he is and hive right however the the extension of with no place to roof roost is suggesting that uh anika says hive and roost excellent so you realize that hive and roost that comparison is not there there is a confusion there are two things that are being presented and these two ideas are not linking or they're in opposition of each other and so this is why it's a metaphor that is not sustained it don't make sense in layman's term and that is why we call it a misused metaphor so for those of you we are like what the heck is going on once again, you are quite normal. Let us look at another one. Let us look at another one. So, so now what we are dealing with is the rubber meat in the road. And instead of biting the bullet on these issues, we just want a punt, right? We, this is a long sentence. <laughs> And we're seeing more than one things coming out, right? And so, so now what we're dealing with is a rubber meeting the road. Let us pause right there. If we look at what is presented that can be metaphoric or a metaphor, which term right there is presented that might be a metaphor? Those are, these are some of the questions. When you're reading your sentence, you're looking at the arrow to see exactly, oh. And remember, the aim of error recognition at this point is not to correct the error, but to be able to identify what, if there is an error, 
And if so, what kind of error is it, right? And then we see, and instead of biting the bullet on these issues, so because of that, and I should have put um, highlighted Pont as well in red, we see that rubber meeting the road is a term that is presented, but it might be metaphor, but it's not, it's not connecting to anything. We also see that instead of biting the bullet, it's presented, but it's not connected. And so, and we punt, punt could have been highlighted as well. Now, I want, as I, as I tie this up, I started this lesson by saying that this lesson is normally taught over a period of time. But we, this is what I love to call an accelerated course. And so, I want you to always remember when you're looking at identifying misused metaphors, you're looking at metaphors that are presented or comparisons that are presented that are not sustained, it's not connected, it makes no sense. That is what we're looking for when we're looking for misused metaphors, right? Let me know if you have any questions. Now, because we're accelerating, we're going to shift now to the next thing on our topic, our list, um, cliche, right? Now, cliche is one of the easiest <laughs> things to identify when you're looking at um misused metaphors is it's it's rather easy because we are so familiar with cliches right or what is a cliche so the question is have you ever heard the term roses are red violets are blue and it goes on sugar is sweet and somehow we would have heard that term throughout our life if you haven't heard the term let me know <laughs> now i have presented a shortened version of the term right here right now why is roses are red violets are blue a cliche that's the question you might be asking and if that's a cliche what exactly is a cliche right now, a cliche is considered to be an expression that is overused. It's, it's as I'm going to go, for those of us who are non-Jamaicans, hush. A cliche reminds me of a suck up bag juice. You know, when you suck the bag juice and it's all crumpled and it's squeezed up and it's like, it's just overdone you're tired you're you're it's just too much and so a cliche is an expression can be a proverb that over the years when it just when it first came about it had meaning it was very might have been very taught um thought provoking it might have been very authentic but as it has been used over and over and over and over and over and over again, it has lost its meaning. It is no longer considered old and tired. Yes. Yes. Till it overused, old and tired, perfect expressions. So cliches are terms that are very old and tired and overused. You're like, Lord, do I have to hear this one more time? And so because of that, you should avoid using them. So uh, a common cliche that we know are good things come to those who wait. That's a lovely one. Another one is every cloud has a silver lining. And those terms are cliches, right? 
So if we look at other examples of cliches, or if you look at my um, picture, yeah, you realize that a lot of different cliches are there. Um, actions speak louder than words. The grass is always greed on the other side. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and so on and so forth. So while you're reading this, is there any cliche that comes to mind that you're like, huh, or any expression that comes to mind that you're like, hmm, that is a cliche. That is something that is tired and overused and overdone. Anything, share if you can in the description below. So while we're looking at this, let us have a repeat of what we have done. We have looked at Ah, Altia, proverbs can be cliches, idioms can be cliches. Onika says, never curse the bridge that you cross. I like that one, Onika. And Sorry, I was reading something. I like that one, Anika. Another thing is that we looked at misused metaphors. We look, we're looking at cliches, and we're going to look at redundancies, right? All that glitters isn't gold. Sure, Nessa, excellent. You never use, you never miss the water to till the rip, um the well runs dry runs dry anika excellent so these are possible cliches that we are seeing that can be considered errors in writing all right now i have a precursor to our next topic and when I play it, this, is, this was taken from at Quiet Perry Instagram. And I saw this and it reminded me instantly of the topic that we're moving on to. So if it is that you're not hearing, let me know and I will try and play it again. All right, so I'm going to play it now. Let me know if you're hearing. All right, so somebody say, um, not somebody. Rajay said he's not hearing. All right, so let me go to the actual video, guys. See, because you know what technology is like. All right, so let me go to the actual video. And I'm going to take out my mic. 